Data science has emerged as one of the most exciting fields in recent times. Now the field is spreading its wings and flying high and so is the demand for the data scientist. Since it's a new field, there is both excitement and confusion about it. Now the role of data scientist is extremely dynamic. No two days are the same for them. Their job involves them to be on their toes and always have their thinking hats on. Now the data they are working with, the problems they are aiming to solve, and the insights they are looking to discover are all constantly changing. And that is what makes the role of a data scientist so unique and exciting. Anything that gains momentum quickly tends to become what everyone is talking about. And the more people talk about something, the more misconceptions and myths pile up. So let me clear all the myths about data scientists we have here. Now coming to the first myth, becoming a data scientist requires genius brains or a PhD degree. Now holding a PhD degree is an amazing achievement. It requires years of hard work and dedication. And I have the utmost respect for the people who are willing to put in the amount of effort. But is it compulsory to do a PhD in order to become a data scientist? Now, this is a heavily role dependent question. There are several layers to peel off, so let's get down with it. To understand this, let's broadly divide the role of a data scientist into two categories applied data science role and the research role. Now, it's important to understand the distinction between these two roles. Applied data science is primarily about working with existing algorithms and understanding how they work. In other words, it's all about applying these techniques in your project. You do not need a PhD degree for this role. Most folks fit into this above category. Most of the openings and the job descriptions you see or hear about are for these roles. But what if you are more interested in a research role? Then yes, you might need a PhD creating new algorithms from scratch, researching them, writing scientific papers. These fit a PhD candidate's mindset. It also helps if the PhD adds to the domain you want to work with. For example, a PhD in linguistic will be immensely helpful for a career in natural language processing. Another misunderstood aspect of a PhD is the opportunity cost. It is a massive commitment from your side, both mentally and financially. Now coming to the second myth is that soon data scientists will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Now what comes to your mind when you think about the perfect artificial intelligence team? The most common answer I have heard is to get as many top data scientists as possible. Who would not like a bunch of top talent working on the same project? But that just isn't practical solution for most of us. One unicorn data scientist is difficult to source, let alone a tons of them. And will your team of data scientists be aware of non-AI parts of the project? Do they understand how the hardware works? Simply put, an artificial intelligence project has a universe of job attached to it. It isn't only limited to the role of a data scientist. Applied artificial intelligence is a complex field. It requires working with different disciplines across the length and breadth of the project. A plethora of interdisciplinary role exists like the data engineer. We have the AI ML engineer. We have statistician domain experts. For example, a self-driving car project will have mechanical engineer car hardware experts. We need IoT specialists. So to break it down, AI will not be replacing data scientists as of now and cannot ever. Now, another misconception what people have is that more data translates to higher accuracy. As a data scientist or a business owner, this is one of the misconceptions that you need to eliminate. More data is not going to contribute more insights if proper analyzation of the data set is not happening. On the contrary, a small yet well-maintained data set might have more excellent quality and monetization value than a massive but a poorly governed database. What matters the most is understanding the data and comprehending its usage. Nothing is involved with the quality of the data used, but what it needs is how you can use them and where it can apply in regard to your business practices. Quantity necessarily is not equal to quality, so more data does not always imply good quality. Now, deep learning seems to propagate more myths than any other branch of data science. There are a lot of myths like Deep learning is another way of saying machine learning. You need a research background. Deep learning does not have many practical application. But the most common myth I've heard is that you need a considerable amount of hardware to perform deep learning tasks. When I first heard about deep learning, I pictured a room full of IBM supercomputers being operated by dozens of data scientists. Don't get me wrong. Deep learning model will always perform more efficiently when it has a powerful hardware setup to run on. But you do not need a supercomputer to work with deep learning. It just might take longer than expected to train the model on your machine. What if the data you are working with is huge? 
Now running it locally might not work. Google as always has the answer to that. Google Colab is a free cloud service that doubles as a coding notebook. But here's the best part. Colab comes with free GPU support. And that's right. You can leverage the power of GPU for free and run your deep learning models there. Colab runs through your web browser, so there's no computational cost to your machine. What else could a deep learning enthusiast ask for? Another misconception that people have is that data collection is an easy part. The main focus should be on model building. Now data is being generated at an unprecedented pace, but collecting and cleaning it is not getting any easier. Without building a pipeline to collect the data, your data science project is going nowhere. Typically, this is the role of a data engineer, but data scientists are expected to know this function as well. I cannot overstate the importance of the data collection step. Collecting honest and accurate data is imperative to your final model working. There are too many sources for data available. How do you connect to each? What format do you receive from each of them? What's the cost of data collection from each of these sources? These questions are something you'll need to ask in a real world setting. Maintaining the integrity of the data and the pipeline is as important as any other task that succeeds it. Now, people sometimes say that learning a tool is equal to learning data science or data science is all about learning tools. So more often than not, people start learning essays or R thinking that it will fetch them more interviews for data science career. Now remember, if you learn SAS, then you are an SAS programmer, but not a data scientist. A data scientist should think out of the box to get the solution, not merely just using a tool. They should go beyond using a tool to derive at solutions. Instead, they need to master essential skills, such as applications of various predictive modeling techniques. We do not deny that learning a tool will help you, but it is not the only thing that makes you a good data scientist. Yes, mastering a tool creates hope for easy entry into the world of analytics, but companies hiring data scientists will not consider the tool expertise alone. Instead, they look for a professional who has acquired a combination of mathematical skills, programming skills, and business skills as well. Now, most of the folks you'll come across in data science will have an engineering or a computer science background. So you might think that you need to know how to code or you need to have a computer science background to get into data science. Now these folks will have experience in at least one of, if not more, of the fields such as computer science, mathematics, statistics, or programming. Does this mean that someone coming from a different background cannot get into data science? Absolutely not. Trust me. However, there are certain things you'll need to consider that people coming from this background already have. So data science is a nuanced field comprising of several aspects. As a beginner, you will require to learn concepts from scratch. It will often be a frustrating experience. Your technical colleagues might know more, they might be ahead of you initially at every turn. And that's where the dedication and discipline characteristics comes into play. For example, folks with a computer science background will already have a handle on how programming works. They can switch between languages relatively easy, but for others, it's quite difficult, but eventually you'll persist and break through. Now, this is one of the most common myths that is still there among a lot of people. Participating in data science competition translates to real life projects. So data science competitions are an excellent stepping stone in your data science journey. You get a practice to your skills on a data set, showcase it to the world, and even stand a chance to win prizes. Now these hackathons and competitions have increased multifold in the last four to five years. And as more and more people want a piece of the data science cake, most aspiring data science professionals include these competitions on their resume. Now the problem from an interview standpoint is that recruiters have started paying less and less attention to this aspect on your portfolio. There are a plenty of reasons why recruiters do not consider your competition experience. Now, first of all is that the real world projects are an entirely different beast compared to what you see in competitions. Data science competitions have clean and almost spotless data sets. If there are missing values, you can impute them using a plethora of techniques. Now, what matters is the accuracy of the model, not the way you go there. So if you talk about the real life projects, they have end to end pipelines which involve working with a bunch of people. Most of us will always have to work with messy and untidy data. And the old saying about spending 70 to 80% of your time just collecting and cleaning data is still true. Tasks like data cleaning and feature engineering will take up the majority of your time. Now, another misconception that people have is that data science is all about predictive models or building predictive models. So being able to predict an event is a powerful thing, and that's what stands out to newcomers in data science. 
building models that can predict what a customer will buy next sounds like a must-have skill right in fact when i describe data science or machine learning to a non-technical person their first reaction is quite similar the hype around this field is unprecedented apparently a data scientist is only building predictive models all day at work there are multiple layers in data science project the model building is just a spec in the overall data science life cycle to give you a general idea there are a lot of steps involved in a typical data science life cycle first of all it starts with understanding the problem statement hypothesis building data collection verifying the data data cleaning we have exploratory analysis then comes designing the model then we have training the model testing the model and if there is an error found we have to retrain the model and again create a new model now nothing is as straightforward as they teach you in a classroom or a course experience is the best way to learn how a project works so to get hands-on experience on live projects what you can do is check out the courses or the data science courses which are available by edureka and as you can see they have a lot of real life projects which you can work on you can also try talking to someone who has seen the end-to-end -end process now this is a new myth that has come up in a lot of people's mind once built ai system will continue to evolve and generalize by themselves now hollywood has done its best to showcase ai systems in the form of robots who possess human level intelligence movies like blade runner the terminator x machina became cult classic for this very reason the consensus they portray is that once an ai system has been built it will continue to work and evolve by itself so once you build a model for say a fraud detection the model will adapt to any changes thrown at it if the entire financial landscape changed or new features were added to the data it's expected that the system will continue to function equally well now this state that ai systems evolve by themselves is called artificial general intelligence or agi unfortunately we are not at the state yet not even close we are very much in the narrow stage right now and the models we build cannot generalize to other tasks or even to big changes in the data can the ai system build to recommend products to the customer integrate a new product without any prior information about it that's why labeling images in an object detection problem are such a crucial task that level of intelligence isn't available to machines yet yes DeepMind and other similar high level research organizations have definitely made progress in this regard you might have come across the news about neural networks creating their own neural networks but these developments are way too few and far between and we have not figured out how to get them into commercial applications so if you think one day machines will be doing all the work you are wrong i hope these myths are now cleared for you guys so guys until then thank you and happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning